Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Morning. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and and rejoice in it. Many people were waiting for May to get over. Today is the first of June. Five months of this year have passed. There are two families that were looking forward to this day, first of June. Hallelujah. Dear church, dear ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, brothers and sisters in Christ, on behalf of the New Life Fellowship Church Dubai, on behalf of the Das family and the D'Souza families, I welcome you today to the wedding service of our dear Sovik and Hensita. We have come together in the sight of the Almighty God and the angels and in the presence of all of you friends and loved ones to celebrate one of life's greatest moments to give recognition to the beauty of love and to begin the journey as a family where man and woman become one 1 Corinthians 13:7 says love bears all things believes all things hopes all things endures all things and this is the verse that Suvik and Hensita have chosen on their wedding card hallelujah hallelujah 1 Corinthians 13:8 says love never fails hallelujah so we stand with them as they will make their pledge of love with god and his angels as witness and we as a family and friends to support them as they begin this new chapter in their lives so without much ado let me briefly introduce the bridegroom and the bride i'll start with the bride sovik i will start with the bridegroom sovik thank you for correcting me sovik sovik das is the son and only child of subhas das and smita das they hail from kolkata india and are members of the grace family fellowship church which is pastored by prosenjit and abhijit dearly beloved please rise and put your hands together as we welcome the bridegroom and his family to the center of the church hey put your hands together and cheer them the handsome bridegroom and his family with the best man simon leading them sovik you look very handsome Relax this is your wedding enjoy it Now it's time to welcome the bride Hensita Hensita D'Souza is the eldest daughter of Henry and Cynthia D'Souza She has two sisters Harshita and Hashmona They hail from Mangalore India and are members of the Divine Kingdom Church Kalarka Mangalore which is pastored by Stanislaus de Souza So dearly beloved please rise and put your hands together as the bride and her family comes to the center of the church
the bridesmaid followed by the bride. I welcome Naveen Abraham to start this wedding service with this opening prayer. Let's all look to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Father God. Thank you, Lord, as we have come here with a great event going to happen today Lord God with love and your divine intervention here today with we submit to you Lord Father God for this time Lord Father that you're going to bring Sovik and Hensita in the holy matrimony of Father we submit this time and your presence to be here fully completely restore everything Lord and we pray that Lord your presence be here even as we worship you and spirit and truth Lord God let there be love and joy be the evident of all these things, Lord Father. We submit this time, Lord, once again. We pray for the worship. We pray for the word. We pray, Father, that you enable everything to be in perfect, orchestrated, in an ordained manner, O oh Lord. We give you all glory and honor to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Brother Naveen. As we prepare for this wedding, we will submit everything to God in prayer and worship. And uh, I'll request Roshan and the choir team now to come and lead us in worship. So over to you, Roshan. Praise the Lord, church. The Lord. I said, praise the, praise the Lord. It's a joyful morning. Amen. Amen. Can I hear it aloud? Amen. 
Amen. Say hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Bible says, Psalms 95. It says, 2 and 3. Let us come before Him with thanksgiving and exalt Him with music and song. And the other version says, sing Him happy song of praise. For the Lord is great. God, the great King above all the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are you happy this morning? Yes. Praise Jesus. I can hear a nice congregation today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So how to know you're a Christian without saying you're a Christian? You sing praise and worship in all situations, in all events, in all circumstances. Amen. And today is a happy day. We're going to shout it loud. Amen. We have a joy of witnessing this beautiful wedding this morning. Hallelujah. All are with me? Can I see hands up? All are with me? Hey, that's good. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I see a beautiful bride and a stunning groom. Praise Jesus. It's, it is my joy and privilege to be able to worship this morning with you all. And thanks for deciding to worship with me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. This is the morning to witness one of the beautiful wedding. Okay? It's a happy day. We're going to sing a happy song to a great God. Hallelujah. Here we go. Great is day in history. And death is beaten. You have rescued me. Sing it out. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. An empty cross, an empty grave, and life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. He's alive. He's alive. Oh, happy day, happy day, you wash my sin away. Oh, happy day, happy day. Is alive. Is alive. And oh, happy day, happy day. You wash my sin away. Oh, happy day, happy day. I'll never be the same. Oh, happy day, happy day. You wash my sin away. Oh. Yeah. 
Jesus. He's a great God. He should be put high. The, the reason of the joy that we have this life is Jesus Christ. And he has given this beautiful movement, not just in the life of bride and groom, but also in us this morning. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. And as we sing this song, okay, it's more like a declaration. It's, it's like blessing the family. Okay. Blessing these two families is going to unite this morning. And, and the bride and groom especially, as they start their life, they start with the blessing that you give this morning. Hallelujah. Just raise your right hand whenever you feel like towards the bride and groom throughout this song and bless them with your heart. Okay? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Shine upon you, be gracious. 
Jesus, for your mighty presence, Master. Father, we ask this presence, Lord, to go before them, behind them, beside them, around them, yes, in them, Jesus. in the house, outside the house, in their business, in their jobs, in their lives, in their family, in their children, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We lay the rest of the time, Lord, in your hands. Let your will and plan come into existence. In the mighty and the matchless name of Lord Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Roshan and the worship team for a beautiful time of worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll now request the bridegroom and the bride to come and occupy the chairs kept for them in the front. We now come to the most important part of this wedding service, which is the sermon followed by the covenant solemnization, followed by the vows and the, and the ring ceremony. So with, I'll now request Pastor Charles to come forward and lead us in this important part of the service. Good morning, everybody. I see that all of you are so nervous. You know, you want to look at the groom and the bride. They're so happy. It was like somebody said, love is blind. Marriage will open your eye. And as I was saying this, somebody added this. Love is one long, sweet dream, and marriage is that alarm clock that will wake you up. But as we have come here to, to witness one of the most beautiful event actually duly instituted by God himself, and that is this institution of marriage. Look around and see those beautiful families that the Lord had instituted. Appreciate them. And I request you to just turn around. Look at those beautiful families that the Lord has created. As we start this one of the you know greatest thing that as i told you before hebrews chapter 13 verse 4 says marriage is honorable among all this is the one institution irrespective of any culture any backgrounds any countries any tradition marriage is honorable among all and you know why it is honorable among all? Because this was not instituted by man. This was instituted by God himself. And if you don't believe that, Genesis, the book in the Bible, says that God brought Adam. He made Adam, by the way. And then after that, he brought Eve to him. And once he saw that Eve is there as a, as a suitable helper or the partner, he rejoiced and he declares... So one, 
is marriage God instituted because as Genesis 2.18 says, the Lord said it is not good for a man to be, to be alone. And it is the thought of God that he instituted this companionship. He instituted this very thing of two souls coming together for the glory of God. And then it is written that God is the one who even orchestrated things. Like, you know, God said to, the, God said to Adam, and he made a woman and brought her to the man. That's what Genesis chapter 2 verse 22 says. It was God who brought the first bride to the man. That's the reason we follow this tradition after tradition of, you know, the bridegroom coming before and then waiting for the bride to come in as, they, um, as he waits for the bride. So it is the Lord who brought this bride to the man. And then God even instructed him. God even instructed Adam. He said in Genesis 2 verse 24, he said, Therefore a man leaves his family and is united to his wife and they become one flesh. And that's the instruction God gave to both of them. It is not just for a man, it is for both of them. As somebody said, marriage is when a man and a woman become as one. The trouble starts when they try to decide which one. You can, you can laugh. That was a joke actually. God said, you both have to leave your family and get united as one. Many marriages we have witnessed, the trouble starts when you involve a third person in your wedding, in your marriage. When I say third person, it can be your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, or anybody who seems to be, you know, standing against this very institution. So once they decide to move out of the family, their government is different. They become different. They are now one government under the headship of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the Lord directed them. Lord said, you know what? Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. That was the instruction given to both of them to fill it and to subdue. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. And when God did all these things, it is written in Genesis chapter 2, 23. When the man, he saw the women. For the first time when the Lord brought this woman to this man, it is written, he breaks into poetry and exclaims, at last, the one who can understand me, one with whom I can share, one with whom I can actually, you know, uh, live a life which, which can glorify God. So then why did God create marriage? Three points. God created marriage. Number one is to reflect God's nature. You know what is God's nature? God's nature is submission. God's nature is sacrifice. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Their union is so powerful. Their union is so loving. Their union is so selfless that there is nothing that can actually come against. And that is the reason why it is fully submission. You know, Jesus willfully submitted to the Father. It was not forced upon him. He willfully submitted to the Father. And Father willfully gave all authority in heaven and on earth in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there is a beautiful union, and that's the reason this, this very character of God is reflected in marriage where submission is willful. It is not that you, know, you have to force your spouse for submission. It is willful. And in the same way, it is sacrificing. The Lord Jesus Christ, he loved this church so much that he gave his life willfully. 
it was not out of compulsion it was not out of duty that he gave his life he gave his life because he loved the church so much loved the, the bride so much that he willfully gave it even to the point of death and if you want to be a successful sovic and hence it if you want your marriage to be successful one is submission and you know we all say this you know wife should submit in fact yes wife should submit to the headship and the leadership of the family but it is actually a mutual submission willful submission from both of their parts as they together move in this marriage and it is sacrificing you have to sacrifice your your um what do you say that your desires you have to sacrifice your ambitions you have to sacrifice things for the institution of marriage so number 1 is marriage is to reflect god's nature number 2 is marriage is to refine our character this is very important just imagine marriage is that greatest instrument of sanctification god has ordained in each one of our lives listen to this very carefully how would you even learn unconditional love if you were to marry someone who met all the conditions how would you ever learn mercy patience long suffering heartfelt compassion if you were married to someone who never failed you who is never difficult with you who never sinned against you who is never slow to acknowledge their sin or ask for forgiveness how would you even learn grace or to pour out your favor on someone who did not deserve this if you were married to someone who are always deserving of all good things then how would you learn this process of sanctification therefore the main purpose of marriage is that through your marriage you both become conformed to the image of the lord jesus christ you may be thinking you have been married for maybe 5 years maybe 1 year 4 years 10 years 50 years if you have been married and you have been thinking you know this this is not what i dreamt of rejoice this very person in your life have made you closer to the lord jesus christ and this very person whom the lord brought in your life is not an accident is not some you know happenstance happened in your life this has ordained by god for you so that you will become closer to god isn't it powerful every time your partner breaks your heart isn't it that you go and kneel down and you ask the lord lord why this why i have to go through this why this pain isn't it powerful that there is a strong communion and a strong relationship between you and your god at that point of time let me just tell you hence and sovic as you start this wedding as you start this marriage there will be times when you have to go through some of the heartbreaks of your life you will have to go through some of the pains that you have never even expected but those moments are the best moments of your life to kneel down at the very presence of god and to say lord i cannot handle it and let me just tell you the lord of heaven's army will come down to make sure that everything happens for good for those who love the lord isn't it powerful so marriage is to refine your character and then the last thing is marriage is to restore a humanity you know if god want to start some movement he don't choose a country he don't choose a entire gang of army he chooses one person and that one person and his wife and that family and then he impacts the generations the generations as we sang today the lord will bless the generations and the generations and the generations because that's how he starts he starts by creating a family he starts with one man and in this marriage he creates this stable human community with security with stability and with the sense of belonging we see you know in the world women and men we are growing up wanting to meet the prince charming i know those who are not married you are looking for a prince charming or a fairy tale princess 
Well, I hate to break to you, ladies and gentlemen, there is no fairy tale of Prince Charming coming your way. It is only the person the Lord intended and the Lord wants so that he can bring you closer to him. Marriage isn't what you see in the channels, shows, or even movies. Every movies have happy ending, happy ever after, and we love to see that. But marriage, the reality is you need to fight for your marriage. The reality is you need to build your marriage. You need to work for your marriage. You need to, with, we call it as, as I was taking the premarital counseling to Sobik and Hensit, I told them there should be a third person in your marriage and that third person should be the Lord Jesus Christ. And the moment you want to get closer to each other, that means you have to come closer to the Lord Jesus and that becomes closer to each other and that's how you, your life purpose will be fulfilled with the greatest emotions and the greatest affection you can ever have. It was Augustine of Hippo who said, a woman came from a man's rib, not from the legs, to be humiliated. Listen to this. Women came from a man's rib, not from the man's legs, to be humiliated, not from his head, to rule or excel, but from his side, to be side by side with him and to be equal with him. From under the arm to be protected and from the heart to be loved. Remember this, all those people who are not married looking for, praying for, waiting on the Lord. Remember this in choosing a husband or a wife if you are unmarried and it is not enough that your eye is pleased. Listen to me very carefully. It is not enough that your eye is pleased, that your tastes are met. That's what the world will tell you, you know. We are compatible with each other. That your mind finds congeniality and that there is amiability and affection. And that there is comfortable home for life. There needs something more than this. And there is a life yet to come. Think of your soul, your immortal soul. Will it be helped upwards or dragged downwards by the union you are planning? Will it be made more heavenly or will it be more earthly? Will it be drawing nearer to Christ or drawing nearer to the world? And all those people who are yet to marry, I want to challenge you with this question. Will it lead you towards the Lord Jesus Christ or will it take you away from the very fact? You cannot love a fellow creature fully until you love God completely. And your marriage starts from God and exists in God alone. So we can hence it, as you've been waiting and praying and, you know, for this great occasion of this day, this, this moment along with your families all together, I pray that you will be that model husband who would willfully, who would sacrificially, who would love your wife, protect her, and care for her all the days of your life. And sit down. as you have been waiting and praying, I pray that you would become that suitable helper for Sovik, leading in a way by accepting the leadership of Sovik and submitting to him all the days of your life, not because he is worthy to be submitted, but because that's a command from the Lord to submit to him as he submits to the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we have come here to witness this great moment, let me just tell you if there is anybody here who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, anybody here who who has maybe heard of him and never thought about this moment. The Lord Jesus Christ came to this earth being God. He came down. Bible says there is nobody who have ascended to heaven. But the very one who comes from the very bosom of God himself. The very God himself became man and took birth on this earth. 
You know why? For the sins of you and me. We are all born sinners. We are born in sin. But you know what? There is this good news that the Bible says anybody who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ from his heart and accepts him as the Lord and Savior of your life, he will come and make his room in your heart. And you are declared righteous in his presence, not because of what you have done, not because of any of your things that you would be doing, but because of the very grace of God. And that's the reason 2,000 years back, he led a sinless life, born of a virgin Mary, led a very sinless life, didn't do any sin, even in his thought, even at the, at the very, you know, deepest to deepest thought, he never sinned. But they crucified him. He, will, he willfully went to the cross and was led to be crucified on the cross. You know why? For you and me. And if you, know, if you want to know more about this Lord Jesus Christ, please feel free to approach any one of us. We would be happy to explain to you. And as we move in to this very important and the most sacred of this moment, and that is the solemnization, can I request the families, especially Sovik and Hensita, to stand in their place and the families to stand. Can I request one mic to be given to um, Hensita's father? Is there any mic? I request both the parents to come forward, stand next to uh, Sovik and Hensitam. Who gives Hensita D'Souza to be married to Sovik Das? I will, I will be giving. You have to hand over her hand to Sovik. Can we all just put our hands together? My, I will be giving my daughter, Ansita, to Sovik. Can I request Sovik and Hensita to walk the aisle together and come on the stage? As I told you, beloved, marriage is of God and it is not of man. And so we have gathered here to recognize that marriage is an act of God. And this is not something that it was ordained by any man. Therefore, this covenant is not to be entered by casually or lightly, but reverently, discreetly and soberly in the fear of God. And into this covenant, Sovik and Hensita have come now to be joined. And as you... Hence it so we as you stand here today before God, it is your desire that this ceremony not only reflect your commitment to one another, but your individual and shared commitment to Christ. And marriage is the clasping of hands and the blending of hearts and the union of two lives becoming one. The two people have come here to, made, to be made one in this holy estate. Let it be known now that Sovik and Hensita are here to be married. 
according to the discipline of the church and the law of this land. Therefore, as congregation, let's uphold the sacredness of this institution as we witness them exchanging this vows. freely and without reservations desiring to commit yourself to one another in this covenant of marriage yes yes Sovik have you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior and Lord yes Hensita have you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior and Lord yes I have can we just pray for them as we start this sacredness of this institution as we solemnize this wedding. Father, we ask your presence at this point of time. And as they commit, as they take vows, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will remind them all the days of their life. And Lord, that in their hard times, in their good times, they will remember this vow for the glory of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we can hence it our marriage is a covenant of faith and trust between a man and a woman requiring openness of life and thought, freedom from doubt and suspicion, commitment to speak the truth in love to one another. Marriage is a covenant of hope that endures all things. And that's the same thing which is there in your wedding card. In which both husband and wife commit themselves to interpret each other's behavior with understanding and compassion and never give up trying to communicate with each other. Marriage, therefore, is a covenant of love in which both husband and wife empty themselves of their own concerns and take upon themselves the concern of each other as they love and care for one another. Sovik. Will you have Hensita to be your wedded wife to live together in the covenant of marriage? Yes. I will. He will. He will. Okay. Will you love her, comfort her, honor her, keep her in sickness and in health? And forsaking all others, be faithful to her till the last breath of your life. Yes, always. Well, this is the toughest one. Will you forgive her? Cherish her for better, for worse, in sickness and in health. In joys and in sorrows until death do part. Yes, forever. <laughs> Will you give God the first place in your life and commit to build a godly home of prayer, praise, and service unto God? Yes. Will you lead responsibly under the headship of the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. Hensita, will you have Sovik to be your wedded husband to live together in the covenant of marriage? Yes, I do. Will you love him, comfort him, honor him, and keep him in sickness, in health, forsaking all others to be faithful to him till the last breath of your life. Yes, I will.
will you always forgive him cherish him for better for worse in sickness and in health in joys and in sorrows until death do part yes i will 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 you give god the first place in your life and commit to build a godly home of prayer praise and service unto god yes i will probably we can clap together at the very end okay will you submit to him willfully as he submits to the lord jesus christ yes i will marriage is a covenant it is not a contract it is built upon the foundation of sublime dedication unselfish love and heavenly affection and this dedication is what ruth spoke in these immortal words entreat me not to leave you not to return from following after you for where you go i will go very lord i will lord your people shall be my people your god my god where you die will i die where there will i be buried and the lord do so to me and more also if or but death part the and me and this is also your commitment as you have declared it among the assembly commitment to one another and commitment to the lord jesus christ can i now request sovik and hensita as they as they share their personal dedication to each other Put our hands together for them as they have taken this personal vows. So, Vic, do you possess a token of love and affection to give to your bride, a seal of this holy covenant? Yes. Hence it do you possess a token of your love and affection to give to your husband a seal of this holy covenant yes as we enter into this service that is the 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 exchanging of the ring can we just all arise in our places we are going to pray as they exchange this token of love as a commitment that they do it before the lord and to each other and we all just close our eyes at this point of time father we just come before your presence once more we ask you at this point of time for your blessing upon sawik and hensita and as they exchange this ring lord that this ring would be a blessing as they commit themselves by exchanging as a token of love all the days of their life as they have taken this vow in the assembly of your people and as they seriously move forward in their life 
knowing that they have done this vows before you the most holy god and before your people the assembly of god's people and as the servant of god i bless them and at this point of time i pray for this rings that this would be a blessing for each one of them in jesus name we pray amen and amen sit up with this ring i seal my vow of love to you with my everything i honor you all that i am i give to you and all that i have i have i share with you in the love of god in the name of the father son and the holy spirit this is my solemn vow put our hands together sovic with this ring i seal my vow of love to you with my everything i honor you all that i am i give to you and all that i have i share with you in the love of god in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit this is my solemn vow For as much as Sovik and Hensita have consented together in this holy wedlock, and I've witnessed the same before God and this assembly, and I've committed themselves completely to each other in the covenant of marriage, I, as the minister of the gospel, the pastor of the New Life Fellowship Church, Dubai, pronounce that they are now husband and wife according to the ordinance. Okay, I did not finish it yet. <laughs> They are now husband and wife according to the ordinance of God in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now you can put our hands together.
those whom god has joined together no man shall put asunder i repeat those whom god has joined together no man shall put asunder i repeat those whom god has joined together no man shall put asunder can i request at this point of time the leadership of this church of the nlf ua region to come forward as we pray for the couple and can i request pastor suresh the lead pastor of russell kemam hindi church at the very place to come forward and pray and bless the couple praise god ayo do russell kemam mein और कनर लीडरशिप भी कृपया करके आइएगा हम लोग मिलकर प्रार्थना करें थैंक यू लॉर्ड हमें हाल लोहिया हम लोग वचन में सुना है जब परमेश्वर ने एक किया तो इंसान अलग नहीं कर सकता है नहीं करना है प्रेज लॉर्ड जो शादी परमेश्वर का नजर में ए पवित्र माना जाता है प्रेज गॉड और जो शादी परमेश्वर ने शुरुआत किया हुआ एक आराधन हाल लोहिया आज हमारा बीच में गवाही के साथ दोनों परिवार के साथ इतना बड़ा कलिश्य के सामने परमेश्वर का उपस्थिति में जो प्रभु को वचन में लिखा है पिश्य तीन बीस में हमारा प्रार्थना से बढ़कर हमारा सोच से बढ़कर कार्य करने वाला परमेश्वर हाल लोहिया आय हम सारे लोग हमारा हाथ को प्रिय परिवार को और बढ़ाएंगे जैसे आज हम लोग आरा दिन में भी गाया स्वर्ग ये परिवार के लिए हाल लोहिया परमेश्वर का उपस्थिति में प्रार्थना के द्वारा इंतजार के साथ जो आज के दिन के लिए ये लोग के लिए जो परमेश्वर ने किया हुआ उपकार के लिए हम ध्यान करेंगे दोनों का परिवार को हम ध्यान करेंगे प्रिय परिवार आज के दिन जो कदम उठाया परमेश्वर का उपस्थिति में आने वाला दिनों में ये परिवार बहुत लोगों को गवाह बनकर जीने के लिए परमेश्वर के हाथों में अच्छा बर्तन अच्छा आय दो कर उपयोग होने के लिए परमेश्वर ने जो कोई ये लोग के लिए वादा किया है वो सब कुछ प्रिय परिवार में वो पूर्ण होने के लिए आइए हमारे हाथों को ये परिवार को पर बढ़ा है हमारा आंखों को बंद करे हमारा पूर्ण हृदय से ये परिवार को ब्लेस करे जो भी बादशाह में आप आशीष करना चाहता है कृपया करके आशीष करे सारे लोग री बारा रबाला शदला रे खेले रे मेने शदला री बैठा री खटा री माला शदले थैंक यू चीज प्रिय परमेश्वर हम धन्यवाद देते हैं यशु मसीह के लिए यशु मसीह का पवित्र लहू के लिए यशु मसीह का त्याग के लिए यशु मसीह का और एक अच्छा योजन के लिए हम धन्यवाद देते हैं पवित्र आत्मा आपको उपस्थिति के लिए हम धन्यवाद देते हैं विश्व रिद से परमेश्वर बाईसो के लिए परमेश्वर प्रिय बहन के लिए हम प्रार्थना करते हैं एन और सोवे का जीवन में आपका अच्छा योजन के लिए और इत के योजन के लिए हम धन्यवाद देते हैं दोनों का परिवार के लिए हम धन्यवाद देते हैं ये लोग आने वाले दिनों में वो प्रार्थन के साथ वो पवित्रता के साथ समर्पण के साथ परमेश्वर का योजन ये परिवार में पूर्ण होने के लिए हाल लोहिया हम मिलकर प्रार्थन करते हैं स्वर्ग को आपने खोला है इसलिए हम धन्यवाद देते हैं हम लोग सारे सब होकर सारे परिवार होकर पिता पुत्र पवित्र
पवित्र आत्मा के नाम से ये परिवार को ब्लेस करते हैं यशु मसीह के नाम से आमीन 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 हम लोग ताज बच कर परमेश्वर महिमा करेंगे गॉड ब्लेस यू Sovik can officially open the veil. <laughs> you can hug. You can hug. You can hug. Can we all? the lord what a what a blessed can you hear me praise the lord what a blessed service hallelujah it is with great joy that i present to you and introduce the couple mr and mrs das God bless you abundantly as you begin your first steps together as a family. Just maybe a thought comes to my mind and I just want to encourage you at this point of time and I just want to read or uh, read from Eccl- Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 12. In fact the whole chapter of Ecclesiastes chapter 4 especially from verse 9 to 12 talks about how two is better than one and how two can achieve a lot and verse 12 of chapter 4 of ecclesiastes says one can be overpowered but with two you can put up a defense but the cord of three strands is not easily broken amen jesus christ is the central stra- strand that you all will entwine your life with jesus christ should be the center of your marriage You all should love Jesus more than you love one another. When you love Jesus more, you will automatically love one another very well. Marriage is about love, about honoring one another. It's about respect. It's about sacrifice. It's about enduring. Hallelujah. Proverbs 3 verses 3 and 4 says, Let love and faithfulness go before you. Let love and faithfulness go before you. Bind them on your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Hallelujah. So that you may win favor with God and with man. Hallelujah. 
as a token of our love and appreciation as a church we have the we have this uh, system where we give a bible as a gift to the couple so i would request aldrin menezes to come forward and give the couple this bible gift This is the first of many gifts that will come today. So enjoy this moments. The couple will now come forward and sign the wedding register. There will be one witness each from the bridegroom side and the bride side who will sign this register. And at this time the bride sisters Harshita and Harmo and Hashmona will be singing a special song.
This, it's all sealed and signed. That brings us to the end of the wedding service. It was an absolute pleasure to be the master of ceremonies for this wedding service. And on behalf of both the families, on, both of, on behalf of the New Life Fellowship Church Dubai, and for every thank you lord thank you for everyone for being a part of this wedding service a special thanks to the youth who really worked hard you know to make this possible all the decorations all the preparations it was a lot of effort so a special thanks to the youth and everyone who worked for for this special thanks also to the worship team Special thanks to the pastors, Pastor Suresh, Pastor Charles, and also the, all the leaders and everyone else who played a special part in making this beautiful for Hensita and Sovik. Now I would request you to please stand up and give this lovely couple a loud and thunderous applause as they will make their way out of the church. to make 